Boodschap al van 0 Echo Tingo Echo voor de Daily Minutes met een nieuwsupdate voor vandaag 14 november 2015. Dit is het bulletin van zaterdag. In het weekend zijn de uitzendingen van de Daily Minutes in het Engels. Zoals gewoonlijk hebben we ook vandaag weer data onder de uitzending met de modus Contestia. Hoe je dat kunt ontvangen en de parameters staat op www.pnl.ete.nl. Centrale frequentie is 355 hertz van de data. All our weekend shows are in English. Today we also have Contestia running during our bulletin. You can see the parameters on www.alpha0echotangoecho.nl. Today we have the propagation bulletin of the RSGB and some other news from all around the world. Hello, this is Mike Marsh, G1IAR, and welcome to the TX Talk podcast of the GB2RS National News for Sunday the 15th of November 2015, supplied by the Radio Society of Great Britain and brought to you by TX Factor. Now the radio propagation report, compiled by G0 Kilo Yankee Alpha, G4 Bravo Alpha Oscar and G3 Yankee Lima Alpha on Friday the 13th of November. Well, we've had another week of disrupted HF conditions thanks to ongoing high-speed solar wind streams. The K index hit 6 on the 10th and 5 on the 11th, showing severe geomagnetic storming. The maximum usable frequency over a 3,000 km path has yo-yoed this week, being as low as 19.7 MHz at noon on Tuesday, but hitting 33 MHz on Wednesday. In other words, you had to keep a close eye on the bands as conditions change quite quickly throughout the week. Looking at next week, the 18 and 21 MHz bands may provide good to excellent DX openings during daylight hours. The period from noon to late afternoon may be best, but both bands are likely to close soon after sunset and remain closed until sometime after sunrise the following day, unless the solar flux is very high. If the solar flux index remains higher than 100 or so, good DX may be possible on 28 MHz during the daylight hours too. And next week, the solar flux index is predicted to be in the range of 100 to 110, with continuing unsettled geomagnetic conditions, especially around the 17th, and that's according to NOAA. And now the VHF and upwards propagation news. Well, we're in an unsettled weather pattern for the next week as Britain finds itself on the edge of areas of low pressure. The main centres of low pressure will be passing to the northwest of the UK, which means that northern Britain will be quite windy at times. Even in the south, some stronger winds are possible as smaller lows track quickly east across southern England. This points to poor VHF and UHF tropospheric conditions and the best prospect of DX will probably be 5.7 and 10 GHz bands from rain scatter and in any heavy showers. Remember that in the winter months, showers are more likely around the coasts. For meteor scatter enthusiasts, next week brings the Leonids, the first of the three big winter showers. It has a short peak between the 17th and the 18th of November. Now, the Leonids has produced some of the greatest meteor storms in history. On the morning of the 17th of November 1966, visual meteor rates were as high as thousands per minute during a short 15-minute period, so be prepared for an intense but short shower. For EME operators, the moon is at the lowest declination at the moment, so next week, moon windows will increase. The path loss will decrease as the moon comes into perigee, its closest point a week tomorrow. And that's all from the propagation team for this week. Lengthy negotiations are ongoing at the World Radio Conference in Geneva on a wide range of agenda items. Regarding 5 MHz, a compromise position based on a 15 kHz wide contiguous secondary allocation for all three ITU regions has been provisionally reached. However, this still faces opposition in the path to formal approval. Even if it happens, the current UK allocation will be in place for the foreseeable future. Progress is also being made on several other items that affect amateur allocations as well as a potential future agenda item for 50 MHz harmonisation. Regular updates from Colin Thomas, G3PSM, who is attending the conference and other background information is available at this website address. It's rsgb.org slash wrc hyphen 15. 
The Four Uniform One Italy Tango Uniform Station in Geneva is on the air as Four Uniform One Whiskey Romeo Charlie during the WRC 15 conference until November the 27th. QSL via Four Uniform One Italy Tango Uniform and the call sign is counted as Four Uniform One Italy Tango Uniform with the DXCC entity as ITUHQ and that's ITU Zone 28. Ofcom has decided to amend the existing Wireless Telegraphy Act 2006 license exemption criteria for some wireless devices, including personal mobile radio, or PMR446. Ofcom has expanded the frequency band and technology choice slightly, but also introduced restrictions on abuse and enforcement, as well as better receiver standards. Please see the new section on the RSGB website for a link to the Ofcom statement. A 3.8 metre dish is being loaned to the ARIS project by Satellite Catapult at Goon Hilly and it will be used to track the ISS and provide real-time video during the upcoming schools contact scheduled for early next year. Last week, G8GTZ, M0AEU and G3VZV installed a PC with Mini Tutune software and a Delta Bravo 6 November Tango down converter to receive the ISS on the dish and they receive video for eight and a half minutes during one pass while conducting tests. You can see a video about watching the ISS by Graham Sherville, G3VZV, on the BATC YouTube channel as part of the CAP15 lectures. From Australia, this is VK1WIA. Rewind. Radio Boys and Girls to the Rescue, 1890 to 1945. A new book, The Radio Boys and Girls, Radio, Telegraph, Telephone and Wireless Adventures for Juvenile Readers, 1890 to 1945, has been published by Mike Adams. Series fiction about wireless and radio was a popular genre of young adult literature at the turn of the 20th century and an early form of social media. Before television and the internet, books about plucky youths braving danger and adventure with the help of wireless communication brought young people together. They gathered in basements to build crystal sets. They built transmitters and talked to each other across neighbourhoods, cities and states. By 1920, there was music in the air, and boys and girls tuned in on homemade radios, often inspired by their favourite stories. The book analyses more than 50 volumes of wireless and radio-themed fiction, offering a unique perspective on the world presented to young readers of the day. The values, attitudes, culture and technology of a century ago are discussed, many of them still debated today, including immigration, gun violence and guns on campus, race, bullying and economic inequality. The book is available on Amazon. With Rewind, I'm John, VK2JPM. zijn dagelijks om 1900 uur te beluisteren op PI2 NOS en s ochtends om half elf verder zijn de uitzendingen onder andere te beluisteren op youtube.com schuine streep PA0 ETE.